crafters disagree about a lot, but they all have one thing in common. Everyone hates the wandering trader. I think he could be the worst villager in Minecraft. It, it sucks. It's not that great. Free leashes. Do you kill him for the leads? Yeah, the leads. Yeah. They're just annoying. They're, they're useless. So he's not getting invited to your parties. Oh, no. Very much at the bottom of the invite list. But he's literally my favorite mob in the game. There's so much stuff I could not get on my super flat world without him. So to celebrate his fifth birthday on January 30th, I decided I'm going to build him an epic house. And after I'm done, I'm going to see if his new home helps improve his image at all. Oh, is that a gun? It's, it's a telescope, Jaren. Today's video is sponsored by World of Tanks Blitz. We'll talk more about that in a bit, but for now, here's the plan. First, we'll make him a stable for his llamas, which should be pretty easy. Then we'll build the house itself, which might actually be kind of challenging because I want to make it match his outfit. And finally, we'll be doing the really difficult part, the dreaded interior. I picked out the perfect spot for his house on the outskirts of Fenhaven. He strikes me as a bit of a loner, so this is just far out enough for some peace and quiet. The first thing I wanted to do was build him some stables for his llamas. Multiple people I asked said they don't like him because of how his llamas spit at them. His pets spit on you. I get pushed around by the wandering trader and then spat out by the uh, llamas. I'm hoping that having a contained space for them will solve that issue. So I went ahead and made plenty of space for each one, and then I worked on a really cool gold trim along the top to match the gold trim you see on his robes. I added in tons of little details to the front and then worked on adding a roof. For all the roofs on this build, I'm gonna be using a mix of lapis blocks, blue concrete, blue concrete powder, and blue wool. This deep blue color again matches his robes and using a variation should give the roof some nice texture. The last step was just adding some nice texturing to the stable floors and some little details like cauldrons and hay bales. And with that, the easiest part of the build was now complete. Time to kick things up a notch. But before we do that, I'm sure you're wondering, Mog Swamp, why is the Wandering Trader your favorite mob? And why do you keep calling him Wandy T like he's about to drop a wrap out? album. Well, the Wandering Trader actually completely changed the way I play the game. See, I'm building this house in my 11 and a half year old super flat world. And for many years, the only wood type I had access to in this world was oak. But back in 2019, when the Wandering Trader was introduced in the 1.14 update, I was able to build with new wood types for the first time in seven years of playing. I'm really hoping we can attract a Wandering Trader. Uh, I've been stuck with oak wood the entire time I've played on the flat world. <gasps> We got coral. <gasps> we got a dark oak sapling. We got a new type of wood. He also gave me access to tons of other important stuff. He gave me sand and red sand, which finally let me have TNT, concrete, and all of the sandstone blocks. He gave me ice, which I use for things like my basalt farm and item transport in my mob farms. He gave me dripstone, which led to me finally having a renewable way to get clay and lava. Plus, he brought so many fun underwater decorations to my world, as well as a ton of plants I could never get before. Access to sugarcane allowed me to make fire works and maps for the first time. And getting cactus from him gave me my first ever source of green dye. And even stuff like vines, moss, and drip leaf lead to other items. Even something as simple as his brown dye trade is essential for me to be able to make brown candles, concrete, and more. Anyways, while I was ranting about how great the wandering trader is for challenge worlds like mine, I managed to build a simple front porch for the house and get a rough outline of the structure into place. I also placed in the floors using a checkerboard pattern of stripped oak logs. All right, I think this is looking awesome so far. I've got a tower plan for this corner here, and I think we're gonna split this floor up in here and have some sort of staircase going up. But I definitely wanna work on the greenhouse now cause Wandy T sells so many lovely flowers and plants and he needs some place to grow them all. I started the greenhouse by creating some spruce supports and filling them in with white glass. But just as I was finishing up, I was rudely interrupted by some pillager scouts. And then after telling them off, my oven timer went off and it was officially time to celebrate. I got the little five here for him. So I'm gonna say HBD, Wandy, this T's like a little scuff. He's really gonna love this. HBD Wandy T with the little five for him. Here we go. Okay. Ready, buddy? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Wandy T. <laughs> Come blow it out, man. Oh, good job, buddy. Yay. Here's your cake, man. Happy fifth birthday to Wandy T. 1, 24. After the birthday party, I was even more motivated to finish this house for our good friend. I mean, a bunch of grown adults are constantly making fun of this five-year-old. Oh, he's ugly, I guess. You don't like his drip? Eh, he's not, he's not bad, actually. He looks okay. He's got a big nose, though. I'm building something, right? And then I just go, hum, like, in the left of my ear. Someone has to stand up for him. Which is why I'm getting Wandy T a tank for his birthday. No, not a real tank. But I am introducing him to an amazing game full of them. World of Tanks Blitz is a free-to-play MMO shooter with over 150 million players 
players from all around the globe. This is a game about strategy, skill, and of course, having a lot of fun. With eight game modes, 32 maps, and over 500 vehicles, you'll never get bored. Personally, I'm a big history nerd, so I love how they give you these little historical references for each tank. After winning a few battles, you actually unlock your own garage. From that point on, there are tons of unique rewards and upgrades to unlock. And it's not just all historical tanks either. They have some amazing fantasy vehicles in the game, including some crazy collaboration. Is that Oliver Tree? Oh my god. There are even eight different nations to choose from, all with unique tech trees and different styles of tanks. And the best part is World of Tanks Blitz is available on iOS, Android, Mac and Windows, Nintendo Switch, and even Steam. So guys, if you'd like to support my channel and dive into an action-packed battlefield of adventure, scan the QR code on screen or check out the link down below in the pinned comment. But unfortunately, Wandy T's house wasn't gonna build itself. So after going on a crazy winning streak, I finally dove into building up the front facade for the building, which is one of the most important parts. I flew over to my Spurch, AKA the Spider Church, to trade with my cleric villagers. Then I used the lapis blocks I got to construct a roof of the front porch. Next, I added a strip of nether warp blocks to add a red accent to the house. I got the idea from the red face covering and sleeves that Wandy T has. I'm hoping this will make the house really match his drip. Then I worked on a Juliet balcony for his bedroom on the second floor. These are called Juliet balconies because they look like that one scene from the play. I guess that makes me Romeo and Wandy T Juliet. I used lecterns again for the balcony railings, which is a trick I love to use around my world. After a quick stretch and snack break, I fleshed out a back porch for the house and then added a nice big window on each side of the balcony. Dang, this is looking really good so far. Finally, I decided to add a really fancy golden tablature above the entrance, complete with every villager's favorite, a bell. With the front of the house basically finished, it was time to begin establishing a curve for the roof. I really wanted to emulate the W Trader's hood with the shape, so I started off with a pretty gradual slope and then steepened the curve into the rounded top. With the roof line established, I could start filling in all of the beautiful blue blocks that really give this house the Wandering Trader vibe. When texturing something like this, I think it's really important to set some sort of rule for yourself, or else it just becomes super noisy and busy. Some of my older builds definitely have this issue. So for this one, I made sure to use the darkest blocks on the bottom and slowly get lighter as we went up. So while the lower parts of the roof contain mostly blue concrete and lapis blocks, the parts at the top mostly consist of the slightly lighter wool and concrete powder. Getting the main roof done was a big relief, but there was still so much to get done. After all, I'm not just doing this for the Wandering Trader. There is much more at stake here. We're romantically involved. What? <laughs> I didn't see this yeah, coming. It's true. Do you like Islamists? Are they getting in the way of your relationship? Honestly? Sometimes it feels like he prefers them to me. <laughs> he never makes time for me anymore. Maybe once you see the house I'm gonna build for him, you'll feel differently. I hope your house can fix our marriage. With Wenzo's entire marriage on the line, I had no choice but to press forward. There were a lot of weird gaps to fill in for the roof and the back of the build. I couldn't just copy the front facade because there was an extra part of the building jutting out. But I actually love doing roofs like this because the problem solving aspect makes it really fun and engaging. Rather than having to be purely creative, like when you have a blank canvas, the main goal is to work with what's already there and make it all fit together. Like putting together a puzzle. At this point, the last thing left to complete on the build exterior was the tower. The tower is partly there to break up the shape of the build and add a bit of asymmetry, but also it's partly to add some cool lore. After all, the wandering trader would definitely need a lookout to spot any angry customers or potential buyers. After putting the red spire on the tower, I was ready to call the exterior complete, which means we're now ready to take on the hardest part of the build, the interior. It's not too hard to throw something together that looks nice on the outside, but filling in a big space like this with interesting decor can be quite a challenge for even the most skilled builders. But since this house is for the wandering trader, we should be able to come up with some fun ideas based on all the items he sells. Oh my goodness, speak of the devil, there he is. I'll take some coral, thank you, sir. Oh my god, his llama just pushed him off the cliff. Wandy, are you okay? No way. Guys, he's actually going inside. Wait, man, the interior's not done yet. Well, I think he's making it pretty clear that he's ready to move in, so we better get started with this interior. I kicked things off by designing the entrance area of the house. I smoothed out the transition into the greenhouse area and added some supports and detailing to give the walls a bit more structure. Then I added a cute little blue and white carpet to match his style, and I even put a cozy table and chairs. I had to figure out where to put the second floor, so I used this alternating stripped log and half slab pattern to give it that rustic sort of post and beam feeling. I also established an entrance to the tower stairwell and added some nice shelving around to store some of his merchandise. Okay, the red here is driving me nuts, so I'm just gonna put down some spruce trapdoors to cover it up. 
Oh uh, yeah, that's that's much better. Right at the entrance, I put a bookshelf and lectern. I like to imagine that after a long day, Wandy T comes home to record all of his sales and then puts the records neatly away in his bookshelf. And then to really complete the room, I added some hanging plants for a bit of greenery. Next, I took care of the spiral staircase in the tower and then quickly added tons of plants and saplings to the greenhouse. I tried to include a bunch of the flowers that Wandy T sells. Next up, I had to figure out how to deal with the back porch area of the build, so I added a floor using the same log and half slab strategy, and I put a staircase to connect the room up to the rest of the house. I decided to turn this room into some sort of music lounge, so I put down a couch and a coffee table, and then dressed the walls up with some beautiful vinyl records. I had to spend a precious diamond to get the jukebox for the room, but it was totally worth it. Next, I decided to tackle the staircase up to the back entrance. I made it nice and wide and grand so that when you walk in the door, you're immediately greeted with it. The stairs double back at the top to form a perfect way up to where the bedroom will be. There was a little bit of empty space under the stairs, so I decided to make a small fish tank where Wandy T can keep the tropical fish and puffer fish he sells. Then to break things up a bit, I went outside and made a nice pumpkin patch where he can grow some pumpkins to sell. But before I could get back inside, someone beat me to it. No way, he came back again! Dude, we must be doing a good job. He can't stay away. Yo, you want me to throw on some music? There we go. Wait, what? Where'd he go? Oh, here he is. Man, he keeps coming back to this spot. I guess he really wants this emerald vault. And so with that, I began creating an epic stack of emeralds for the vault. I got pretty creative with the lime candles and warp buttons, but I think it works. Look, he loves it. This guy's an emerald fiend. I made sure to put a super secure entrance on the vault to keep his emerald safe from any thieves. And then I made the outside a bit cozier with a couch and some carpet. Next up, I added in some details to the lookout tower, like a little telescope and a cartography table that the W trader uses to plot out his trade routes. But before moving on to the the top floor of the house, I decided to take a break to quickly install a little koi pond in the backyard behind the greenhouse. I figured this is where Wandy T would get the sugar cane he sells. But after that, it was finally time to tackle the last empty space in the house. I built out a nice bedroom for the trader to the left of the stairs, including a comfy bed and a little reading nook. I ended up making the middle of the room into a sort of a dining area, so it only made sense to put the kitchen in the remaining space. I used a campfire and a hopper minecart to create a smoking stove and added a nice kitchen island to round out the space. I even included a brewing stand stocked with invisibility potions, since we all know Wandy T prefers to go incognito at night. There was a lot of space above the dining area, so I made sure to pack in tons of awesome clutter and details. And with that, the build was basically finished. But I always love to go back in with some finishing touches, just to really get that attention to detail. So I flew back to my base and traded with a leather worker to get some fresh sets of leather armor. After washing them off in a cauldron and re-dyeing them, I was pretty happy with the colors. I even added some gold trim to one of the sets to make it really match Wandy's swag. Afterwards, I did a pass around the yard to add in some more plants and texture. One of my favorite parts of this entire build was going through and naming every single book in the bookshelves. I wanna make sure that anyone who downloads and explores this world has so much to look at and experience in every little nook and cranny. Plus, I just love the lore implications of adding a sales log at the front door or a book of poetry by the bed. All right, I had one last idea while I was flying back here. I'm making this little cow pen here in the backyard so that Wandy T has a place to get the milk buckets he drinks every morning. I think quartz is probably the milkiest block in the game. <laughs> I don't know if anyone has ever said that sentence before. The final task left was to move in the animals. So I returned to my base and began leading back two llamas and a cow. One of the llamas was named Gertie, but the other one was nameless. So I brainstormed some names as I walked back. All right, get in here, Gertie. You too, come on, in the pen you go. All right, there you go, girl. I'll name you Sunrise, cause that's when Wandy drinks his milk. And I think I finally have a name for llama too. There you go, obscurity. All right, I think this place is finally done, so it's time to call up some Minecrafters and see if I've changed any minds here. The Wandering Trader has a whole house. Here it is. Oh my god. I based it off his drip, as you can see. He does have drip. I gotta look up what does the Wandering Trader look like again. <laughs> oh, nice clothes. Check out this outfit he's got. Oh, very nice. And he sells tropical fish and puffer fish. He raises them himself. Oh, that's and then he sells them to other people. That's so cute and concerning. I feel like everybody's always thinking he's so greedy. He spends all of his emeralds on these high quality first edition studio release finals. I don't think it matters what you spend the money on to the not be considered greedy. No, he's not greedy. He's just, he's a music lover. Okay, so like the gunpowder trade, dude. <laughs> Whack on some tunes, go on. All right, all right. Oh, not 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 the best taste in music, but it, it's fine. This is not like some re reproduction. This is studio this is, print. Yeah, straight from the studio. Sometimes I think he loves the music more than he loves me. Well, don't you guys have like a song? Oh, we do. <laughs> wait, 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 which one is it? Wenzo and One DT in a tree. Those are the unheard lyrics. A lot of people that only know the instrumental version. He's also a cartographer plotting out his next journey with this telescope. Oh, is that a gun? It's, it's a telescope, Jaren. Looks like the Umberstan's got a bazooka. Oh my God, okay. Looks a little bit like 
like a sniper rifle. All right. Um... Well, we don't have to. <laughs> oh God, it's gonna finish straight through his neck. What are you talking about? This is totally a telescope, dude. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's really a jack of all trades, a Renaissance man, if you will. To be fair, he has a nicer house than I do. He's well read and a poet. A wanderer drifting far from oh, home. I, t I, t I tell you what, there's a lone tear trickling down my cheek right now. You can't see this, but it's there. He's always been good at poetry. Always sang a beautiful poem to me as the sun was setting. And of course, a llama tried to come in and ruin the moment, but... See, his llamas are not going to be as angry anymore. They now have ethical enclosures for each llama. I don't foresee them getting mad at you anymore. I think that's exactly what's needed. We've always had llamas kind of, you know, creeping up on us at the, at the wrong moments and... Oh, yeah. Oh, it's really put a strain on the marriage lately. They've all got their spit buckets, so uh, their overactive <laughs> saliva glands, exactly. they, can, they, they can get rid of it. This is where he brews his invisibility potions that he drinks. I, I kill them for invisibility potions. All right, it's you great. should admit that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> he's even slayed the ender dragon. I feel like a lot of people don't know it. He's a warrior. He's an adventurer. I, I'm starting to question what, what can't Wandy T do, you know? I, exactly. I did not realize he had all these strings to his bow. So with all that in mind, I just want to know if your opinion on the wandering trader has changed. At all. I'm more willing to respect the wandering trader now after seeing this establishment. So next time you see him, are you just gonna kill him or? Ooh, I'll give him like a light stab. All right, that's probably the best I can ask for. Only T, bit of a legend in my book. I was hoping you'd say that. Honestly, Mog. Yeah, uh, I would say I'm. Um... Our marriage is fixed. I can cancel the therapist. Ah, finally. I've saved you so much money, haven't I? You know what, Mogsump? Yeah? I think you've changed my opinion on wandering traders. I knew I could do it. I hate him even more now. What? Well, you win some, you lose some. I just want to give a huge shout out to Grayson for the original inspiration for this build. He's a good friend of mine and an incredibly talented builder, so please check out the links to his socials in the description. All of his builds are available on Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, if you want to explore my world and see the Wanderer's Manor for yourself, I just put up a new world download with my up-to-date flat world. Anyways, that's it. See you later. Subscribe for more.